Um, so once you have created your story, you have them in a sprint, how do you add them to the sprint? Well, typically before the sprint is started, you can just pull a story and drag it in. But after the sprint is started, now you're adding new scope to the sprint. It actually prompts you, ask if you want to add this because it wants to make sure you're, you're conscious that you're adding more things than was originally con, you know, confirmed to, to do. So for example, if I took this story and I wanted to add it to the sprint, I will just drag it into the sprint. And if I wanted it to be done, I don't know, maybe the third thing, I drag it up to the third spot and let it go. And then Gerald asked me if I really wanted to add the scope. And I would say, yes, I'll confirm if I wanted to. And now it's now in the sprint. So that's how you do the prioritization. Now, if I look at this story, let's say the story is right here. Now you can write your user story however you want, right? Jira gives you a blank page. So if I look at one of these stories that doesn't have details, let's pick one of these. Um, it just, this is how it looks when you create a story. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't force anything on you. I mean, you could have your own template that you can upload to Jira. Jira does facilitate you creating a template, but really and truly every team can do whatever works for them. Jira itself does not enforce this, but it doesn't mean that you should do whatever, right? And so I have a course on writing user stories, so you need to take that course if you need some help. But typically you want user stories to look something like this, to be laid out well, to have a separation between the acceptance criteria and the rest of the user story, and to have numbers and bullets and indentations. They can be easily read. They can easily refer to things. Okay, number two is the problem, 2A as opposed to a whole big paragraph that would be hard to refer to, right? So in this case, you have a user story like this. You're able to attach things. As you see here, I have an attachment of a screenshot. So if I were to click on it, it'll bring up the screenshot. Now the screenshot doesn't really match the story, but the point is that there's a screenshot. <laughs> How do you do that? You go to attach and then you, you, know, you pick something from your computer or whatever, your screenshot, and then you just attach and that's how it attaches itself to the story. You can also create a child issue. I'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about tasks, but this is like an issue that is a child of this. So you have to solve that smaller issue that before you can solve this, that's typically how that works. There's also linking an issue. So I could say, well, this, in order for me to create the authenticate user, I have to, I don't know, maybe do the login first. So this is blocked by the login and we say login here to be tech three. So I can go here and I can look for tech three because it's uh, it's recent, or if it's been like in a different sprint or you know long time ago, I can go tech three here. So now I choose that this story is blocked by this. Now it could be blocked by, it could be that it's blocking or blocks, is cloned by, is cloned, is duplicated by, duplicates, repeat, you know, relates to. You can also create your own custom name like in one of my projects we created uh is dependent on as an option in this drop down so you can customize this drop down in the settings area as well so now i'm going to link this and now i have linked this story so now when my developer comes in he knows that before he can build this authenticate user that this ability to log in has to be built first and so he might go on and pick this story up if it's not yet picked up and work on this first before he works on this see how that works you can also add comments in here. So I can come in here and start saying this story needs a um, screenshot. I don't know. I wouldn't be saying that because I'd be the one adding the screenshot, but you get what I mean. So you can start put comments in there. You can put add comments. You can, in this case, I don't have anybody else in my team, but if I did it, you know, the name would pop up. I pick that name and that person will get notified, which is where the spell notification comes in when they are mentioned in Jira. And that's how you create a comment, right? It's very helpful to have comments because sometimes you wanna mention things, you wanna add, you can add attachments to your comments, you can add files to your comments. So it's very helpful to keep the communication going with your team on a specific story at a time, right? So it, it becomes clear. And it also is documented for future uses. So you, if you come back to it, you can read back through the comments, see what files were shared, and so you don't have one person walking away with the only understanding, but you end up having multiple people can look at the same story and walk away with the same understanding. It's very easy for transparency and um, being able to understand well. So 
in the user story you have the body here you have all these options you also have this more like apps so if you wanted to add apps you could click on apps i don't think you're going to see it now because it opened a new tab and i think i'm only recording one tab but you can come into jira and extend jira basically by finding additional apps like i've added apps for for figma to add figma designs i've added apps for zeppelin i've added apps for google sheets like you can add apps as long as they're available to extend the use of jira as you and your team see fit so we talked about the comments we talked about the body of the user story we talked about all of these options up here we talked about the attachments we'll talk about these so these are your details your fields so you can always come in here and assign the story to someone so you can pick the person who's there right now it's only me and you assign them and then they'll get a notification to say that they were assigned but typically in scrum you don't assign things you do not assign things to people people pick up things off the top of the sprint backlog and they work it all the way from in progress to QA ready to testing to done or whatever your process is so you typically don't start off your sprint assigning a bunch of things you let the developers pick and work on the things that they basically want to work on as long as they're all working towards a sprint goal and getting it done within the two weeks that we said for our sprint then you have labels so you can create labels on the fly and you can create them and use them in very cool ways you can build filters on them you can build dashboards based on them they're very helpful and you can when you label something you know that you know the label helps to clarify you know where you are in addition to the status so i could have something that is in progress but the label says let's create a label that says um block maybe maybe just block maybe it's a block for you to release or you could name something like ungated or gated rather let's do gated gated means it's a way of you closing off a feature so that it's not ready for customers to see it yet. So you gate it, you put it behind a flag, a feature flag, that you turn on the feature, they see it. You turn off the feature, they don't see it. So as you're building it, you can know, okay, this needs to be gated. So I can make sure my customers don't see it until we are ready and it's been tested and we can say, yes, I want to re release it, I want to launch it. And at that time, you change it from gated to ungated. So you could create a label called gated and that's how you create a label, just put the name in. And once you click away, it becomes even linkable. So if you wanted to search by everything that's off this label, you would click on that label and all those things would just show up in a list, right? So it's very versatile. The sprint, it automatically assigns the sprint because that's just, once you drag a story into a sprint, the sprint uh, field is updated, right? The story point, this is what the team will come up with. There are many ways to get to this story point, but once you get to it, then you can put the number in here so you know what the story point is. And again, you can extend the different types of fields that's shown here. Some people may have a different version showing. That's because you might be using an older version of Jira. But if you just downloaded it, you should be seeing the same things I'm seeing right now. But if you had it before, you know, there might be differences. Now, once you, once you look at these and you say, well, there's something missing for me. I need, I need a new field. Maybe I need a field that says severity, right? And I could say, you know, severity one, severity two, severity three, or maybe I could say critical, urgent, low. There's fields like that that you can add. Uh, some of them are standard, some of them are gonna be custom fields that will make Jira more personalized to you and to your team. So that's the left-hand side and the right-hand side for now.